In tonight's episode, a burglary goes horribly wrong and results in murder. Please join myself and Clary as we investigate the crime scene, discuss the evidence, find out about the suspects, and a whole load of other fun as well. Please join us for Leighton Brothers Mystery Room Part 4. Greetings everybody and welcome back to Leighton Brothers Mystery Room Part 4. I'm here with the beautiful and lovely Clary Pose. Hello Ada Pose. And we're ready to continue our little mystery. Uh, we've just started our second one and we've just been introduced to our uh, a, a new character, a kind of uh, slightly injured... Um, it, was, it was a robbery I think was what we were going to be investigating. So. Uh, Let's uh, get straight back into the case and see what is what. The Bungled Burglary. The requester Florence Sish. Oh, I can't reopen the case. Have to start anew. So I guess we get to hear that exciting bit of dialogue again. Excellent. And there you are. Ow! Achoo! Alfendi! Hmm. Not here. Can I help you, miss? Oh, Al's got a young woman in here, has he? <laughs> they, she really doesn't look well, does she? She looks very, very poorly indeed. I'm also questioning whether Cockney was the right way to go with a lady called Florence. <laughs> she just seems to have kind of wheeled herself in. Oh, there you go, there's your next bit of dialogue. Huh? My name's Florence Sick. I work at the lab. Oh, uh, hello, Florence. Uh, you're actually on time to stay, I see. Is he mocking the afflicted? Yes, he is. And uh, generally being kind of patronised. She's got an She's IV in... still attached to her arm and he's berating <laughs> her for being late. <laughs> I wouldn't just say not funny. I'd be quite abusive towards <laughs> my thing. Not funny, Al. You should be ashamed of yourself bringing a woman back here. No, I just started work here. I'm Lucy, Lucy Baker. Uh, friend Lucy, is it? Oh, new blood, is it? Well, anyway, enough preamble. I want you to look into a case. You didn't do the achoo. Well, anyway, enough achoo preamble. You can't say achoo. You don't sneeze by going achoo. It needs to be like you know, or you know. Uh, do, do you do you want to be Florence? No, no, no. You can be. Florence. And also, I thought you said that she was in a car accident. What, what's with the sneezing? I sent our lab report over already. So why did you come over here? Anyway, hey, but it's not like you to ask for help with the case, Florence. I mean, is it particularly puzzling or has something gone wrong in your life recently? It's as clear as a test tube. A burglar broke into a flat and, a chew killed one of the residents. Well, well, if it's that black and white, how come you want us to get involved? Wouldn't you more call this a murder rather than a burglary? <laughs> I suppose it depends what you're most upset about, the death or the fact that something's been stolen. I, I would, it would be the killing that would get me. Because it doesn't add up. Sniff. <laughs> you can't. That's all right, I always say the punctuation. Oh, question mark. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> I didn't press the button. <laughs> the suspects are suspicious as they come. Well, you would expect them to be you so. You would. He's made a statement already, but I'm certain that's, that there's more to it than meets the eye. I can't abide the thought of the case being closed before I've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. Absolutely. All the T's! So, you want the prof to look into it and figure out what's niggling you, is that it? Yes. Would you mind a, a prof? Why is everyone calling me this bloody name? Uh, I'm not sure I like you calling me that, uh, Florence. Uh, I prefer more uh, uh, Mr. Layton, Sir, Master. You know, All right, then, prof. Oh, God. If that's your only objection, I presume you'll take it on, uh, uh, prof. Uh, as well, yeah. Well, some, 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 some other conditions. If you promise it to make the last time you address me like that, full stop. Certainly, prof. Oh, dear. You have a this. deal. You can't get the stuff. So where's the file, and more importantly, why are you still here? Didn't I already say I'd sent it over? Oh yes, look, here it is. Oh yes, we'll start investigating this file at once. I've kept it in my really tidy filing system in my office. Just know this, if you fail to solve it, I swear I'll keep calling you prof until the end of your day. That's a bit threatening, isn't it? That is. Achoo! Achoo. 
Uh, Lucy, we have to solve this case. Failure is not an option. I cannot be known by this ghastly, ghastly name. And obviously the fact that he's going to be called Prof rather than the fact that someone's going to get away with murder is the most important part. I think that is... Well, he didn't know the victim. Maybe the victim... Oh, in that case, it's fine. ...was a really nasty person. Anyway. I, Prof... Professionalism will see us through. I don't know. I, I, I heard what you did there, and I, I'm not happy about it. Right. So here we go then. Oh, this is you. I believe you're you're dialoguing. Who? who uh, I missed it. Well, do it quickly then. Who is it? You. It I... happened in a fairly ordinary studio flat. <laughs> oh no, murder! I used to seeing blood by now, and the male victim in this case were covered in it. That's broken glass. There were three suspects. Just like wow, that. those are cool suspects. I remember being surprised by the clever trick the killer employed, but that weren't why the case stuck in my mind. Oh no! You see, that was the first time I ever saw to the side of the pro. To the side. I have an other side. The bungled burglar. Hey, I get, file to, be, I get to be dark and mysterious. I never <laughs> get to be dark and what mysterious. What makes you think that dark and mysterious is his other side? It's my other side. <laughs> Okay, hang on. I've, I've practiced my dark and mysterious okay. voice. <clears throat> right. Let me tell you. <laughs> I don't think dark and mysterious necessarily means creepy. That wasn't creepy, it was mysterious. Really? Let me tell you what we now know. <laughs> that actually couldn't get any more creepy. The vi Look, stop it. I didn't interrupt you when you were like, oh, top ball, dip, 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 dip. Anyway, <clears throat> the male. Okay, fine, I'll do, I'll do normal voice until I get dark and mysterious. Okay, fine. Well, the victim in this case is a young male murdered, murdered in his first four flat. His Hold my hand up. We've almost managed to identify. No, hang on. We've already managed to identify him, and he's something of a loose cannon. Oh? Uh, yes. We like these metaphors. Woman with a checkered past, loose <laughs> cannon victim. We have to. None of them are in us truly innocent, you know. Yes. A certain Jack Potsby. The incident occurred a few days ago, just after midnight. He's got big hair, a spotty jumper, thin legs, and a tiver. And shoes. You and shoes. the shoes. I wonder if there's a reason why we're not seeing his face here. His wife, a woman by the name of Goldie Potsby Man, was having a shower when she heard him scream. Provocative shower towel that shot there, I think. not suitable for children. She ran out of the bathroom to see her husband lying on the floor and the culprit skedaddling away. That's right, I improvised the word skedaddle there. Did you like it? No? <laughs> Good signs there. According to this statement, the killer was a muscular man dressed entirely in black. That should give us a good head start with finding him then. Yep, someone with black clothes. It narrows it down. Well, the block's caretaker was on duty at the time, heard the sound of glass breaking, and being an extremely athletic and not <laughs> at all overweight gentleman, ran into action. He ran upstairs and knocked on Potsby's door, whereupon the wife, who was no longer wearing a towel, told him about the intruder. Wasting no time, the caretaker conducted a search of the grounds and apprehended a suspicious dwarf. He got him. What do they need us for, then? There's nought to do, surely. Ah, well, the apprehended man has an alibi of sorts. He's a known petty criminal by the name of Buster Nix. <laughs> Buster, Buster Nix. Oh, it's, a, it's a subtle, though, on that one. Oh, he's even dressed like... He's even got a little striped shirt, has, like a little convict. Bless him. Bless him, and he's got... He's, he's got little, like, makeup round his eyes. Is that Postman Pat? It's not Postman Pat. It's Postman, Postman Pat Postman with Postman Pat would never be a moustache. criminal. Moustache! Look at that nose! It's Postman Pat's turn. I take your point. Well, maybe it, maybe the post office has been downsized. You know, the, the internet, email... And he's resorting to this. And he's resorting to this. My question would be then, where's Jess? Yeah, where's the black and white cat? Because it's always like, you know, Postman Pat with his black and white cat. You know, it's not just Postman Pat. He seems to have got a little Homer-style beard going on <laughs> as well. Oh, very nice. The lies some people tell. Well, he says he ran off when he heard the sound of the shattering glass. The sound of the shattering glass? The sound of the glass. In his statement, however, he claimed he didn't see anyone coming down from the floor above. Of course he didn't, because it were him that did it. The thieving numpties incriminated himself with that. Well, uh, maybe, uh, but I think not. I, I think if he wanted to deceive us, he'd be claiming he did see someone running away, surely? Surely. Oh! It's, I think that was my eye. Sorry. Oh! Thank you. Oh, I. I suppose you're right. That would make more sense. You're almost convicted of an innocent man, though. Almost. So, you know, it's a good job we're on this case. Watch yourself, you know. 
Uh, well, that's what's bothering me. If you conclude Nix is telling the truth, things get very complicated. Don't they, Just? They do. That's that's why I said it. So let's start making some deductions, shall Yay, we? Yay, deductions! I love deductions. I love deductions. I hope they let us deduct it and then ten minutes later ask us to say the same thing again. Me too. I it's my favourite when that I happens. I like that about the first game. First, um, do you think you can determine who did it from the crime scene and the witness statements we have? You're going to put me on spot again, are you? Uh, absolutely. And then you can make me tea. <laughs> I'll tell you what. First, let me fill you in on the three suspects. Make your own tea, mate. No, no, that's that's your job. N no. I stand here with my hands very deeply in my pockets. And I hold my hands up and I say, make your own tea, <laughs> Look, do you think my hair curls up like this naturally? Do you think this single curl <laughs> stays in the air just by itself? Takes years and hours of training. You make the tea, I'll fix the curl. And, and what about that beard? How much work does that take? That, that, was, that grew while I was fixing the curl. <laughs> Get right. on with it. To start with, of course, we have the burglar, Buster Nix. Buster Nix. Buster move! <laughs> right, he is 61 years old and a man. He's a suspicious man. A suspicious <laughs> man. <laughs> That's his actual profile. Suspicious man caught nearby with what appears to be a large sack, a duffel coat, a striped neckerchief, and like Brian May's hair from And today. Postman Pat's nose. And Postman Pat's nose. He's an old lag. Isn't that like a horse? A lag, I don't know if I know that. Um, and a serial burglar known for his swift getaways. He was caught in, he was dressed in black and caught near the block of flats, which of course fits with the description. Um, very suspiciously, he was caught in the gardens around the block of flats immediately after the incident. But there's his statement, don't forget. If he really is our man, then what he said doesn't make sense. What did he say? Didn't he just say he was. Didn't oh. he say he didn't do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that it is, can't that be is him. strange. He said that no. is strange. If his statement is true that he didn't do it. Alright, no, quite. You must be careful not to jump to any conclusions. Next, there's the caretaker. Oh, that's an awesome name. Chase him down. Chase him down. Chase him down. Uh, he's uh, 45 years old. He's also male. His moustache points to the sky. Um, he's a concierge of the flats where the incident occurred. A keen bodybuilder. Is he? Or is he just a bit fat? He's a bodybuilder. Look at those muscles. Is that? I, I don't Look know at those that, are muscles. I'm not sure that's a muscle. Look, you be careful. Look, it says he can get quite violent when angered. It oh, seems. Ooh. he's a keen bodybuilder who recently joined an exclusive nearby gym. I reckon we should go and discuss the gym how often he has actually been there. <laughs> and he can get quite violent when angered. It seems. How do we know that? But yes, we know that. Um, his actions from when the incident occurred. Oh, sorry, that's what he's in voice. Mm -hmm. uh, his action. I've lost. I've lost my voice. Ah! I've lost my voice. <laughs> Um, oh, well, whatever. Uh, his actions from when the incident occurred uh, to when he caught Nick seemed to be nothing but laudable, you know. Perfectly, he could uh, always have ended. Oh, oh dear. Oh, <laughs> he could possibly. always have engineered it that way, couldn't he, though? Uh, <laughs> a little bit too laudable, don't you think? <laughs> and then finally, there's the victim's wife, Ms. Gold. Why is she Ms.? Ms. Doesn't that mean divorced, usually? No! Why do people always think that Ms. means divorce? Because, you know, Miss single, Mrs. married, Ms. divorced. No, I'm Ms. We should probably talk about <laughs> <laughs> that. Probably not on a YouTube recording. Excellent. Um, right, Golby Potsby Man. Uh, she's a suspect. She's 32. She's female. She's uh, Potsby's wife. She's Jack Potsby's wife. You know, we know that. She's a stunning beauty, apparently. She's got kind of hair like Cruella de Vil. She has, and a nose, which isn't much better. Um, and she's got a big... Yeah, she's got quite big, pointy uh, a nose. Um, she's a stunning beauty. Sadly, this isn't the first husband she survived. Oh, dear. Uh, she claims to have been showering at the time of the incident and was the one who discovered the victim. I wonder if there's any witnesses to her showering. Wow, what a stunner. Oh, okay, well, that answers that question. Oh, really? Uh, is she? I'm, I'm kind of uh, asexual, is she? Are you joking? Well, anyway, that's what we know about all the suspects. Now, I've set up the reconstruction device to include all of the info we've gleaned so far for your perusal. We're a little short on details for you to say with any certainty at this stage, but what's your gut instinct, Lucy? Who do you think the culprit is? Once you've had a little think about that, we'll start trying to make some logical deductions. Who's the criminal? Just go with your gut feeling to start with. Well, I don't think there's enough there to go on. I don't, I, I don't know this. And, and last time we did this, and it was irrelevant anyway. Yes. 
Well, should we start by investigating the crime scene? I would say that would be a. And a then good if we're still stuck, we place. can ask for help. So we'll 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 go for that. Let's see what let's see what I have to say. There'll be now we can say about anything if we don't hurry up and investigate the crime scene. You're hurrying me up? Oh, you going to get started. Good, good. Uh, the kettle's over there, and uh, I'll have two sugars. And while you're doing that, I'll turn on the reconstruction device. What? Let's start snooping. Sure, that do. And here we are. The crime scene of reconstruction. This is the flat where the incident took place. Have a look around. I'll only give you five minutes, though. <laughs> Murder can be fun, you see. No problem. <laughs> no, we've only got five minutes. Get a regular on. Okay, sorry. What, what do you want to look at first? Let's look at the body. Let's look at the body, yeah. Okay. In we go. Right, well, the, the glass is on the body, which would imply that it was broken from the outside. Yeah. Or maybe a shot came from outside. Uh, we've entered the window into evidence. It's a French window that opens out onto the balcony. Broken glass from it is scattered on the floor inside. It was unlocked. Why would it be unlocked? Surely someone would have just come in. And all the fingerprints have been wiped off. Okay. Um, let's zoom in a little bit more. Uh, all right. Corpse broken glass. Let's have a look at the glass then. Uh, shards of glass that exploded over the flat when the window was smashed. Considerable force must have been used throwing pieces on top of the body even. See, that maybe implies also that the corpse was there before the window was mm. broken. You know, that actually the two things aren't necessarily connected. Uh, corpse. Uh, the victim's dead body. He was fatally stabbed in the back. No other signs of external injury are in evidence. Now, curious was he stabbed and curious with the glass? Sir. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's zoom out. Uh, I will look at the bed. Why don't you talk us through this one? Here's a bed. A large bed on which a pair of pillows are in place. It appears the couple slept together here. Doesn't oh. look like anyone slept in it, does it? Unless they're very clean, very, tidy, very tidy people who made it up afterwards. We've got a TV over here. An analogue television set placed on a small wooden cupboard. At the time of the incident, a drama starring popular actor Roscoe Strapping was airing. Oh, I love Roscoe Strapping. He's excellent. He's very, very good. I loved him when he was in that show. What? The Roscoe Strapping show? Yeah. Oh, you've seen it? <laughs> Let's have a look at the table. Salt cellar. Maybe there's a sandwich. There no. are chairs. There's chairs. This is a small, cheap chair made of laminated wood. Despite the low-cost materials, they're very well constructed. Oh, we should get some. I like the fact that not only are we investigating a murder, <laughs> we're also investigating future decorations of the house. Uh, the, ch the other chair it's, says it's the, the same. same. Says They've the got same. two. Oh, hang on, that's not a salt cellar, it's a beer. A wooden table with several empty beer cans on it. They appear to have been drunk by Potsby. Okay, but there is more than one beer, but he could have drunk them all. So if he was drunk, that might mean he wasn't really knowing what he was doing. Uh, where have we not looked at yet? What's this then? A clock and a door. Okay, clock. An antique-style grandfather clock with a large pendulum. I'm not going to make any jokes. I'm just going to be straight on. Family yeah. show, family show. A door. A door leading out of the flat. Fingerprints belonging to the victim, his wife and the warden were identified on the handle and the key was kept inside the flat. Okay, so the warden's fingerprints are on them. So that means he could have got in and out, I guess. But other people couldn't. I suppose with the smash being on the outside as well, that would also imply... You know, which way the, where, it, did the killer come in through there? Were they uh, in and out through there? What have we got over here? A fridge! Let's have a snack. It's a medium-sized domestic refrigerator. Very little in the way of the food inside. It's stocked largely with cans of beer. Alki. I think we might be investigating it. Oh, kitchen knives. Could that be our murder weapon? A set of three knives stowed in a Yeah, cupboard. but all three are still there. That's true, unless the killer was very, very clean. Mm. Do you want this one? A simple narrow galley kitchen that looks highly impractical. It doesn't near appear to have had much use. I had a nice little small kitchen when I was young. There's nothing impractical about them. <laughs> uh, a rubbish and a recycling bin standing side to side with lids to prevent unpleasant odours. They are mainly empty and contain nothing of relevance. This makes me think that not a lot of cooking goes on in this kitchen. Well, hang on, there's a cooking pot. 
sorry, a very large cooking pot, in fact, in which it appears pasta was boiling at the time of the incident. I wonder if that will be a relevant clue. Uh, right, we've got... Oh, we've got... Oh, we can twirl the camera around a bit more here. We've got a few more things to investigate. Bathtub! A bath with attached shower. There are indications of recent use, but forensic investigation has tr has revealed no traces of the victim's blood inside. Well, I hope not. Well, that it. supports the fact that she was having a shower recently before it happened. It does. It does. And also the fact that people... Oh, and also supports that maybe she didn't stab him and then go and have a shower as well. Um... Because people don't tend to bleed while they shower. Nigel, a snug little sink next to which is a cup with a pair of toothbrushes inside. That is cute. Aww. Let's have a little close up on the toilet, shall we? There, there it is. It's a regular toilet, and apparently it's not regularly cleaned. Um, it's extremely dirty. Well, we should take that into evidence. Here you go, collect some. Uh. Scrap of card. This could be important. A thick creased scrap of card. It looks like it was intended for the bin, but fell out. It is slightly damp. We should probably investigate that one further. Here's the bin. It's a rubbish bin um, containing discarded toilet rolls and wrappers and the like. <coughs> it doesn't appear to contain anything related to the case. Let's just zoom in a little bit further. Now it seems to be that then. So we've done the toilets. Oh, we've got a cupboard over here. Let's just see if there's any... Can we get onto the balcony? Oh, yeah, yeah, we've got another... Oh, there's some more stuff on the balcony, so we've got to do this before we start running out of time, so let's do cupboard first. Oh, it's another whole room. Oh, no, it's just the wardrobe. There we go. A closet containing the victim's clothes and those of his wife. Its contents appear to be a complete jumble. See, is the kind of person whose wardrobe is a complete jumble likely to make the bed? I think the bed might be just badly animated. Oh, okay. Plus, it's a reconstruction, isn't it? You know, it's not supposed to be the bed. Oh, well, I think you should get details like that. That's true, actually, because I suppose if you're going to base a murder conviction on a badly reconstructed reconstruction, maybe she made the bed after stabbing him. Maybe. Okay, memo pad. A piece of pad. A piece of pad. A piece of pad. A pad of paper with several phone numbers scrawled upon it, all of which have been proved to belong to various takeaway I told you they didn't do much cooking in that kitchen. Uh, well, everyone loves a good takeaway, you know. Uh, we've got a telephone, a touch-tone telephone. The phone records show that on the day in question it was used only to call the police after the incident occurred. So there de definitely seems to be kind of more food shiz remaining here. Right. Let's turn this here camera around then. Nothing else over there. So just whatever this thing is. A balcony. Okay, it's the same description from before. An uninviting concrete balcony. The flat in question is on the first floor above ground level, but a determined intruder could gain entry to the premises this way. Okay. And a blood-stained towel. A towel stained with the victim's blood. It belongs to Potsby and his wife and is normally kept inside the flat. Well, that's it. That's that's all the evidence we have. The only button we've got now is name the culprit. Can we name the culprit? Well, what do we know? We know that we don't have the murder weapon yet. No. We know that he's been stabbed in the back. We also know the glass was smashed and that the fingerprints have been wiped clean on the grass, glass. How about this, is the theory. The the security guard did it, because mm. he's got access to the room with his key, and then he opened the balcony door, because he was on the inside, and then wiped his fingerprints off it, went on the outside, and then smashed the glass to make it look like mm. it was the intruder. And then came running when the lady called. But then I suppose the wife could have done exactly the same thing. She could have. There's no reason why it would necessarily be her over him or him over her. Um, what about this towel on the balcony? With blood on it. But that could, which would imply that if there's blood on the balcony, that would mean that someone must have been in the bathroom. Let's see what options it gives us if we name the culprit. So, who do you think did it? 
slide the cards and touch the one showing the person you think did it. Let's check the files. So our suspect is a man dressed in black. She described him as muscular and dressed entirely in black. See, muscular doesn't fit the other guy, does it? It doesn't fit the, the burglar guy. It fits the bodybuilder. Security guard, yeah. Jack Potsby is a typical loser. He's unemployed. Gambling habit, good looks, with one grinned feature. Seems like he recently had enjoyed a big win, so that so mm, robbery could be a motive. Uh, I was taking a shower when I heard my husband scream. I knew something was wrong because he doesn't normally <laughs> scream like a girl. So I hurried out of the bathroom. When I came out of the bathroom, I saw an outlaw running away across the balcony. He was a very muscular man dressed all in black. So I guess what we kind of need to be looking for here is like, can we find a pair of people telling the truth? Like, if she's telling the truth and the robber's telling the truth, that means it's the security mm. guard. If the security guard's telling the truth, I think. Uh, as I headed up to the flat, I head up since I heard the window breaking, the door was locked, so I knew the crook would use the balcony. There's no other way out, and I think we can confirm that because they, even though that's in red. Um, as soon as I heard the crook had done a runner, I scooted around the outside of the block, caught a dodgy man dressed all in black with a rear entrance. There he is. I was planning to do a break on sword to the gaff. On a gaff in the ground floor! Um, I was just about to do the window in. Do the window in. Everyone's so cockney, it's lovely. Uh, when I heard glass breaking on the floor above and I nearly died, I looked up a story, saw the windows broken, I thought it must be one on my lot, but I didn't see no one come out. Then the incredible bolt got me. Interesting, but if the if the glass is broken on the balcony, that again just implies that there's someone outside the room. Especially as the glass seems to have broken inwards, onto a body. Which would imply someone killed him, went onto the balcony, locked the balcony, and then smashed exactly. the window, and then came back in. Which would then go with what Buster Nick says. A door leading out of the flat. Fingerprints belong to the victim and his wife were identified on the handle. The keys inside the flat. Which maybe that implies the warden couldn't get in if the keys yeah, were exactly. Then again, if he's the security guard, you'd have keys, wouldn't True. you? There's the fridge, mainly yeah. beer, no food. And then we've got the objects that we just looked at. Uh, French widow over to the balcony, broken glass, it's unlocked, fingerprints have been wiped off. Here's the, here's the glass. Considerable force must have been used, throwing pieces on top of the body. See, that again, considerable force. Just to be a bit sexist would imply the bodybuilder who's been to the gym and stuff as well. I reckon it's the bodybuilder at the moment. Fatally stabbed at the back, no other signs of external injury. He's drunk, small cheap chairs. Roscoe Strapling! There's their bed. I think this is all. It's all just the stuff we already The content, contents appear to be a complete jumble, might say it suggests that it was searched, but she must have had a really long shower. There's our clock, a bloodstained towel. But this bit confuses me. Why would there be a bloodstained towel on the on outside? On the outside. And as she came out wearing the towel, stabbed him, and then did all the rest of it. But whoever... Does that also imply that the window is broken from the outside? Because if you break glass, aren't you supposed to like put your hand in a towel to stop it cutting? Yeah, you're supposed, so to, protect, yeah, you're certainly supposed to protect your hand, yeah. And then we've got this bit of card, but sadly we can't look too closely at the card yet. Well, I guess we've got to go for it. I think so far it does seem to be more... Chase them down. Chase them downs. I agree. Let's let's go for that. So we shall go for that. Okay. Hmm. What brings you to that conclusion? Is beef. Someone as burly as that would have no trouble committing murder. You're obsessed with food. I reckon he planned to set Nick's up for it right from the start. Really? You mean to say you think Nick's break-in was somehow arranged by Downs? How? Hmm. Well, um... Hmm. Let me tell you what I think. I suspect the true culprit is in fact the victim's wife, Potsby Man. What? You don't. I do. You don't. Yes, and I can say that with... Oh, the power of my eye chin. 96.4% certainty. Who did he say he was certain about before in the other case? Was that the, the guy remember. that ended up doing it? No, I can't remember either. And I can't remember what percentage of certainty he was. No, I can't remember the percentage either. You're pretty sure of yourself again, aren't you, Prof? 
Well, there's still an uncomfortable 3.6% pound that of is such, uncomfortable. such uh, to be must limited. That's quite a... Uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I'll need to speak directly to the, to the suspect in order to clear up one or two loose ends. I assume you mean... Our prime suspect, Miss Goldie Potsby Man. Alright guys, thank you very, very much for watching our little um, investigation. If you would like to see us in investigate Miss Colby Pottsby Man and discover what accent we're going to use for her, then you will need to join myself and Clary Pose um, in um, the, the next episode. If you have enjoyed our little investigation, please give the video a like and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to make sure you catch up with all the latest stuff. And Rex Banner has finished <laughs> eating a banana kaboom, which is... Uh, <laughs> Which is good news. Which is good news. Hooray. <laughs> he, he did enjoy that. Um, so it's, it's, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Take care. Bye. Bye.